And I start the live stream. All right, so welcome everyone to this B weekly IPLD dev meeting. It's April the 29th, 11 p.m. my time. <laughs> um, welcome everyone. Um, so as every time we just go over what we did and then discuss any open issues that we might have. Um, as I'm the gatekeeper of the crypt pad, I am the first one who ed edited his items. So I basically just worked on the IPLD format stuff still. I got good reviews from Rod in the past week. So hopefully now the PRs are all good and they can be merged the next one or two days and then bubble up the whole chain in the JavaScript world. Um, and in parallel to this, I'm trying to get the um, stack specification work on IPLD. Um, real quick, stack is some stands for um, spatial temporal. Oh, I don't actually I don't know the acronym. Anyway, it's about geodata, um, about spatial temporal data, and it's just a catalog. Um, and it is described normally with a static JSON files, and it's really built upon um, HTTP and the web. And hopefully, I can convince the people to kind of, at least a few places, change the spec so it also works with content address systems. And um, good news is they don't use um, JSON LD, so they don't use the full thing, but just like having their own linking stuff. Um, and they are using URLs, so we should be good if we use something like the scheme, like IPLD colon and then the CID base encoded or something like this. We'll see. Um, but also the, the other good news is that I'm friends with most most of the authors of the spec, so um, the chances chances are high that I can influence the spec. Um, and the plan is um, to actually get a prototype working because it's an upcoming conference in August where there's a challenge where we, I submitted um, that I want to work on this stuff. And I think it gets accepted, or even if it's not accepted, I will still work on the stuff because it's in my OKRs. And I think it's pretty exciting too, because it would be the first step into the geo world, and they don't need to get the I don't know, like full idea of how content addressing works and so on, which is the small step, like a catalog is really a small step into this space and they hopefully can then the people to use it and then they see, oh, I can also store my data in it and so on and go from there. Um, but I'm pretty excited about it because I think it's a nice small size project to get things started. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Um, I can also probably yeah put this also in the uh, notes. I forgot about it that I want to talk so much about it. Um, so I think you don't have to yeah type everything. Um, I I will edit. <laughs> Thanks. Um, next one is Michael. Hey. Uh, uh, so yeah, just some quick updates. Um, I pilled the Earth, the uh, the centralized block store that I was putting up for some demos for us. Basically works now. Um, I can mint us some tokens and we can use it for just a place to store blocks if we want to build some stuff and just do really, really simple demos. Um, I'm still fiddling with the Amazon stuff to try to get cloud funds on a subdomain to work, but there's just a different URL structure that we could use for now. Um, other than that, uh, the meetup is next week, so we have a full set of people to give virtual talks, I think, at this point. Um, if anybody else wants to give a talk, there's still room, though. We have we have a really big slot, like an hour and a half. so. Um, anybody who wants to say something, please do it. Also, the people that are signed up, remember that you like you need to write a talk. So <laughs> do that. And then, uh, yeah, and then getting ready for the summit in a few weeks. Um, it'll be real fun, too. That's it. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's all doing two weeks. Uh, I should probably book my tickets. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. You're not very far away, so that's not it. <laughs> yeah, but still, like, yeah, yeah, but still the trending, yeah, it's, it still makes sense. Anyway, so next one is Eric. Um, 
Yeah, does that include me? The talks next week? Is that a thing? I forgot. Um, so in recent news, I did a bunch of selectors work and I finally publicly confessed to it uh, earlier today. So we had a big long meeting about that in the, the GraphSync group of folks. And there's a bunch of links in the crypt pad here if anyone wants to check that out. I've discussed it with some people in one-on-ones already and I think it's okay, but we'll see. So there's some spec PRs and the interface in the Go code has been sort of slowly evolving and it got some interesting new features like selectors are now going to have an interface in code for describing whether they are high cardinality or low cardinality in, their, in what they're going to explore. So that we can decide whether or not we're going to iterate through the whole node or if we're going to like bug out individual fields, which might be important performance optimization for like complex data structures like hands and stuff. So that was interesting. And um, yeah, some of that stuff seems to actually be shaping up really nicely now. It's back to a recursive format. So it's honestly much more like something Volker was trying to push a long time ago than the stuff that I had drawn out in the meanwhile. So thank you, Volker, for being smarter than me. I came around eventually. Um, <laughs> and I still have some open questions on those designs about, um, I kind of have this train of thought brewing that like maybe there should be some slight distinction between matchers, like whether or not a specific node is in the matched set, like the thing that I'm going to call a callback on in the library, versus the set of nodes that get explored. And right now those are kind of hodgepodge together in the same structures. And I kind of want to play with another draft where maybe they're separated because I think that might be a useful idea. Um, but that's like a very partially baked thought right now. So if anybody has more time in the next week or so and wants to talk about that, I'd really like some other brains. Um, and in other news, we had um, Jeremy and I talk about like what will be needed for Filecoin to start using GoIPLD Prime and TLDR. They're probably going to need the bind node implementations. And I have no idea how to prioritize that overall yet. So that is some ongoing discussion there. <laughs> That's about it for me. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Thanks. Um, okay. Uh, anyone? Does anyone else have any updates or wants to say about his status or something? Mm. I guess, I guess I had a, a question. If if uh, we have time, Michael, you yep. can decide if we this is a uh, for another time or not. But I I had I'd been bugging Michael a little about about uh, the web seeds like features. Um, and I guess my question is like how how slow is too slow? Um, in the sense of you know if, if the problem is really like you know, even if we reduce the number of provider records, like it's just, the DHT is just too slow to do anything and we need stuff now for humans to use. Um, like that's a pretty big problem to just go ahead and say like, let's use the centralized thing. Uh, as opposed to it's, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's a little slow or maybe it's a pain for people to run cluster if they don't know how to run cluster. So you want them to be able to use like hosting on Amazon instead or, or something like using S3 instead of running nodes that have to process all the traffic. Like those are like different problems. And I guess I just want to, have, if, if people have time and are curious, I think that'd be interesting. Well, I, I mean, that's like, that, that question is, the answer to that question is different depending on the use case, right? Like for some use cases, it's going to work fine. And for some it's not. And I think that, I'm not entirely clear on what the top line use cases are for IPFS other than just package manager. And if there's a particular package manager and it's data that we know that we need to optimize for and we know how many records that is, then we can come up with a pretty clear answer on like whether or not that's gonna work. Um, but if it's just an open-ended question, then I don't really know how to solve it, right? Like I know that when, like some of the work that Arcadia's done to try to talk to partners or potential partners and their use cases, some of those have been, you know, in the millions of records. And so it just, it, it's just been kind of a no-go. Um, 
but I don't know if those if those use cases are the ones that we actually care about in the short term right now for IPFS at least. Are they millions of independent records or are they yeah. that we actually yeah. need individual access to? Yeah. Yeah. Like um like crypto kitties is one of them. So like how many kitties are there? I don't know. There's a lot. There's gonna be more in the future. <laughs> Each kitty's a record. Well, so in some of these cases, you can create one massive directory, but the problem is that, like, if I want to point to one of these sub-records by hash directly, then, yeah, you need to announce it, so. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the issue with, like, with something like CryptoKitties and, and, and a lot of these use cases is that there's this big, long tail of, like, stuff that's really high access that you, that everybody's going to be asking for, and then, like, 90 plus percent of it that like nobody ever asked for um, or the or if they do ask for it they ask for it like incredibly rarely and you know if we put it in a hamp it's just going to be like really random which directory people are going to need or not um, and then it's not necessarily going to fix that for us like we don't have a great way to know ahead of time which of those like need that kind of access pattern and which don't um, the, the the well okay the concern I'm trying to address there is uh, actually content routing or, like if we put it in a big hamp then at least we only announce one route uh, the problem there, though, is it's like if someone now decides, oh, you know, I want to like point to this item directly instead of pointing to this mutable IPNS record, uh, <coughs> yeah, then it just doesn't work because like we won't be announcing the, each and every single individual record. If well, and also now you're sharding the network for each change on the on the tree, right? Because you're only announcing the root. So the people that are like subscribed to the old root when they got the data yesterday are not going to be sharing a network with the new people, right? But 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 at the same time, if you look at the, the package manager's use case, right, like a lot of the packages that are popular are like 5%. And so if we just go about announcing like a package name record, like like the root of each package by name, rather than every individual version, then that might be enough, right? Like so, and, and then, you know, that would be in the, with NPM, that would be a million records pretty soon. It's like 700,000 now. Uh, uh, but that might be that might actually be manageable. Whereas, like, if you were doing the versions and then all the chunks of each file in the versions, you're looking at you know maybe, yeah, maybe like hundred million records. With npm, we can probably just announce the root of the entire npm tree. Uh, well, no, no, I take it back. We can't do that. It, no, that's a bad idea. It changes every second. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So the, 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 yeah, that's the problem. We're like, like, <sighs> fuck. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, like. I think that NPM, if we don't go with NPM and we go with a different package manager that's smaller, we could definitely just do it at each package name. Um, if we want to put NPM data in and we want to announce it at each package name, then we know that that's a million records, roughly. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And if we, can, if, we, if we know that we can do a million records, then great. Um, but well, so yeah. This is, this is also why I have that separate issue around like some slightly more centralized content routing system, which is still going to be slightly more decentralized than a centralized data storage system. Uh, Basically, you have like a like you still find the data in a decentralized network, but you would like or the the references or the things that the parts that tell you where to find the data could be somewhat centralized. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like like these 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 are all like you know we we have we have a bunch of different answers that we can apply to different use cases, right? Mm -hmm. I think that what we really need to understand is like what is the use case that IPFS is going to end up max, like optimizing for that we definitely need to be able to fix, and then we can mm -hmm. say like okay, well it's this. It's potentially this research project that we don't have a great answer to yet, and maybe we need to do something in the interim. Or it's just as simple as saying, oh no, we're just, let's write a system where we only announce this level of the tree instead of every rec instead of every CID in the tree. And then that would be the solution. And we do need to write that because we don't have it yet. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't, I don't have a clear answer on what the use case to optimize for is. So I don't, I don't have great direction for you right now, uh, Adin. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. I guess I, I was just curious because the, right, like, obviously, like, the, pro, the pro, proposal that I had put up there has nothing to do with DHT records, right? Um, it's like, it's helpful, it's helpful, but if you're, it's helpful if you want to be able to store your data without running an IPFS node, but it's not at all helpful for this problem of I have too many records. I mean, I, I don't I don't actually I don't have a good reason not to do it right like I don't have a good reason not to put a multi adder in um, I mean maybe Steven does but I don't I don't see why that kind of flexibility wouldn't be useful for some use cases in the future I just don't know if it necessarily fixes the issues that we 
consider a top priority now, but I don't think it's a very big change, right? Like, would it, I don't think that it would be that, that difficult to implement, so I don't have any reason not to do it. It would be painful, um, but like <laughs> a, any network change is painful, basically. Uh, so, like, well, actually, I think, um, there may be ways of doing it that would be slightly less painful. Basically, like, no matter what we do, we'll have a transition period where, like, we'll have to make servers start support, like, DHC servers start supporting it, and then have DHC clients start using it. Uh, effectively, like, yeah, like, I, I don't know if multi adders I mean, are right by that, by, by that, but. So, like, hold on, hold on. Just, uh, okay, by that, do you mean that there will just be a time? Sorry. I'm, I'm, so I'm trying to get clarity. Like by that, do you mean there's a period in time where there are records in the DHT using this new thing that a bunch of peers just don't know what to do with, or literally like those peers will blow up when they see that data because they're like, oh no, this isn't right. Um, like how well, like how disruptive is that change in the network? Well, so I mean, like the servers will reject it probably, uh, just, like, depending on how we implement this. I'm assuming they'll just end up rejecting these records entirely. Uh, so in fact, like to make this useful without like adding a bunch of round trips, like try something and then if that doesn't work, try something else. Uh, like we could either up the DHT protocol. So like you learn ahead of time, oh, you speak this person the protocol, therefore I know you speak, like you can store these kinds of records. Or we just like say, well, like we add support on the server side for this type of record, wait a couple of releases, get most of the network to upgrade. We can look at the, some of our DHT crawlers, like see like when most of the network is upgraded. And then once this happened, then uh, we upgrade all the clients and, and say like, okay, now the clients can start actually putting these records. Um, otherwise, if like, we start having the clients put the records before the DHC server support it, the DHC server will just sort of delete the records and throw them away, um, and which is going to you know, break everything. Um, well, it won't, it won't yeah. break any. It won't break any clients. It just won't add any functionality until enough of the network no. is up. I well, I mean, like, so like if a client puts like or tries like in one record, like put a peer that has something and some multi adder, then it'll break it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah, no, it, it'll just like. He just won't do anything, which is probably fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, the the other question is around like I'm not sure if I don't know. I'm still not quite sure that multi is the right solution here because multi is generally address a machine. So you're kind of like saying like like this machine. Hmm. It's like in fact we still need something to say like we need like you should speak this protocol to this machine to fetch this thing. Like multi is like they, they tell you how to connect to the machine, but they don't like. Well, there's a whole thing right now, right? There's like a, whatever, a Slack thing going on and some GitHub issues about libp2p folks trying to figure out HTTP and Unix socket addressing with multi yeah. adder right? Yeah. Like the plan is to, is to do that. Right? Uh, but that's, but that's really like, like address HTTP endpoint, not necessarily an HTTP file. Uh, so like there's a difference between like an HTTP endpoint that's used like an RPC library or something like that, like a piece of content on some server. Uh, it's like multi well, just it's not used for content. Uh, so like the way we'd use it is say like, okay, like here is like this directory in the server. And then under this, or it's really like, here's this API endpoint somewhere. Query this API endpoint for this thing. Uh, the problem is like, it just like, I think we actually have three fields. One would be like, here is the endpoint you should talk to. Here is the protocol you should speak with this endpoint. And then, uh, well, yeah, really, sorry, I guess two things. Yeah, but here's the endpoint and here's the protocol you should speak over this, like the endpoint described by the multi-adder. Um, we could potentially put the multi-adder, she's like, this space is not very well defined. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know the right way to do this. Um, so. I'm sorry, I have to, to, to end this discussion because I just saw that uh, Rod joined the call and he should also get the time to talk about his updates. So, Rod. <laughs> Rod, are you there? Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, so my updates, are, look, I, I, don't, I don't have anything um, major that, um, that, to report. I haven't had the most productive couple of weeks just because of some health problems, but um, I spent um, what did I do, a bunch of time on schemas. I have been um, building out a, a little test suite for a schema parser hopefully trying to get this right and also um, bumping up against some of the issues that um, I've been going back and forth with Eric about with regard to union representations. Um, so that's been kind of interesting. Um, and also the other thing was um, the pull requests that, uh, that Volker put in 
to all the IPLD JS libraries. Um, that was a really good chance to dive into the details of them all. Um, like I hadn't really looked in the um, Protobuf IPLD library uh, and I spent some quality time understanding that. So um, that, was, that was all very helpful for understanding the status of things. So um, those were the two big highlight items for me the last two weeks. Um, and going ahead, I'm I'm mainly focused on schema stuff because I want to I want I really want to make get to a point where I can actually start implementing something because I, I can imagine this being a rabbit hole that end lasts for months. <laughs> I don't really want that to happen. I want to be able to use this for something interesting soon so that we can prove its utility. So that's that's the aim to make it useful soon. Cool. That's all. Cool, thanks for the update. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to talk about? Um, a wee toss on to the how to make schemas useful sooner than later thought. Um, like, God, yes, definitely. Um, one thing that I've been considering doing over on the Go side is uh, leaving aside the DSL parser angle right now and having the equivalent representation in Go code and trying to write the validator parts because it would be nice to use that on some data for other stuff. Like I would really like to have the, if I could lament not having the DSL, but then like write all of those types in Go structs and then have that validate method work on the stuff that I'm drafting for selectors, for example, just to make sure I'm not doing anything BS in the selectors. That's another thing that would give me value really soon. And that's not stuff that's fully landed in the Go libraries either, but I wish it was, for an example of how to make it concrete. Yeah, um, that would be validating things like union types and um, the, 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 the types that are um, not the base types. Is that, is that what you're thinking with the validation? If, you, if you're not um, doing the whole deal. Yeah, like put the whole tree of the IPLD data in and like sanity check that it matches the schema. So like if I had a Boolean appear in that data and it wasn't supposed to talk, uh, nothing that I screwed up. But I'm really, really, really glad you're doing the um, the DSL side stuff as well. <laughs> so. I'm just I'm just not seeing it, um, it, particularly in JavaScript. I'm not seeing a, a an easier path to making it useful other than um, having it be able to do a transform. So take a data structure, transform it into what you actually want. Um, that, that's what I'm thinking. I'm not sure, maybe that's the wrong way to do it, but that seems to be the most logical path for utility. I'm, I'm totally thrilled by all of the directions you've chosen so far. So I'm just offering that I had a, a slightly different one over here, but it's based on different constraints too. So options. Yeah. I still want to um, get this union stuff right. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do in the next couple of days is, is try and I'll play with the proposal that you had for putting the representation for fields in line uh, with parens um, and see if that solves some of the annoyances. Because it's it, it really is when you look at a parser, it's the unions that stand out as the problem because every, all the representations do something completely different to what you're reading. So it just doesn't seem doesn't seem right. It's um, is it possible that there's not enough examples of other things that are weird? Like, have you tried having um, parser examples for stuff like structs which are represented as arrays? Because those have a bunch of weird as well, but maybe not as much weird. I, I was working on the, the on those yesterday, um, and that see that didn't seem that that problematic. Um, I, I haven't done the string join stuff. Um, the, the, any of the string formats, um, may, maybe they'll end up being weird as well. Um, but it just seemed like the union ones were fundamentally weird because each one of them was was different. But yeah, you might be right. So one use case that I have um, that I need, like, that I want to have in JavaScript, is basically just a change log data structure. So um, the node itself would just have uh, the current root, like a link to the current root and a link to the prior 
change log route so that you could just traverse back through all prior versions as you update it. So, and it, it has sort of a mild transform in that as you apply paths to it, those paths all just apply directly to the, um, to the current, um, to the current route. But there's also a property for versions to go back into time. Um, but those, yeah, those would get exposed a little differently than they actually look in the data structure. So there is like something like a transform to the reader end of it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how close we are to having that uh, be a thing, though. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to skip over the some of the, the no, more novel string format stuff is simply because I didn't imagine them having obvious utility straight away for transforms. Um, so. Oh yeah, sorry. It's not the string transform stuff. It's it's path transformation basically. Yeah, no. Yeah. What I meant was, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to get to that quick quicker by trimming off some of this stuff that just seems a little bit extraneous, but um, necessary. But in the future, but not so useful for getting to utility early. So, I mean, I, I, I need to. I need. I do need to draw a line under under my approach because I don't. I, I really, as I said, I don't want to be spending the next you know, two months on um, just parsing and getting it perfect because that doesn't seem like a good way, good use of time. Um, so I need to make sure that the approach I've taken is, is, is working towards something useful. Um, and if not, then change tack somehow and maybe, maybe go for a validator instead of a transform. Yeah. I'm curious. Um, I don't think I've looked at much of your code since you pasted some of the, the peg grammar in the chat. Um, do you have that generating an AST node graph, I guess, is what that would do? Um, so, yeah, sort of. Um, the, so the, the peg grammar will generate a, um, it's essentially a, a data structure that represents what what's been parsed. It's not a perfect AST, but it's mm -hmm. it's, um, it's close enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'll I'll try and get the code up to somewhere on GitHub soon. Um, it's just not in a good state for putting anywhere at the moment. So, um, but I've, I I've, I've started to make it a bit more structured. So, um, what I what I what I wanted to do was share the. Uh, the test case fixtures with you. So I did them in a form, I'm, I'm writing them in a format that is not specific to JavaScript. Um, so, you know, it's got the the schema snippet and then a JSON representation of what it would come out as for some, to be useful. Uh, and then I wanted to add to that to have, um, you know, a, a, a data structure that would be, that would come from a block maybe in, in JSON representation. And then, be able to apply the schema to that as well. I haven't got to that bit yet, but that's what I was hoping to extend this with. So um, I'd like to share those with you because they, that, that's where I'm starting to see more of these patterns of, um, it, it's the examples really that make this thing um, come alive, at least for me anyway. So just these building out these small snippets of what this thing looks like and what it, what it should be represented as to be useful. Um, is the most interesting bit. So I really want to be able to share that soon. Um, so I'll, I'll get that on GitHub in some useful way soon. Cool. Um, all right. Um, is there anything else? Because we're already running out of time. I don't see any hands. So, oh, I, I see hands, but they are not waving. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, Thanks all for your time, and uh, we talk again in two weeks. Goodbye.